Well, here we are on um, Monday, the 22nd of June already. Can you believe it? Time is flying. We have seen an amazing year this year, and so many things that you wouldn't have ever thought would happen have happened. <clears throat> we knew that uh, the minute a good man that had a good business and was successful made all the money he could in life and was friends of Oprah and The View and all these uh, <laughs> people that hate his guts now. <laughs> as soon as he became president, first of all, they said he would never do it. And he beat out 15 other Republicans. Then he made mincemeat out of Hillary Clinton. And uh, she didn't know what hit her because she still thought she was made president after she was beat. <laughs> she was cussing out everybody on her staff. You know how mean she can be. You know, she gives Bill black eyes and everything. Anyway, the bottom line is Donald Trump comes in, doesn't take a salary, does everything to change things, more help for the blacks than ever in their life, more helps for Hispanics, improve the unemployment tremendously. Uh, <laughs> just saved us millions of dollars on some of the military things that were being done and told the different countries in the UN they had to start paying their fair share. That's a good thing to do, isn't it? The UN should pay their fair share. We don't even need to be in the UN. Uh, many of us would admit that and agree to that, I'm sure. But anyway, everything that he's done good, and they turned on him, and there's only one reason. This is warfare, and it's not black and white. It's not racial. No, it's spiritual. It's good and evil. The good blacks and good people who are white, as we call them, which I think it's all hilarious because we're all some form of tan. If you look at me right now, I'm a light tan. I'm not white. My hair's white. <laughs> but anyway, it's not about that. It's about a good and evil thing. The devil came to kill, steal, and destroy, right? And Jesus Christ came to give us life and life more abundantly. Now, if the devil knows he's running out of time and Trump is out to clean the nation up, and I don't mean, I don't like cussing at all. I really don't. I don't like any cussing, and I don't like some of these words, but I'm talking about cleaning up politics, cleaning up lying to one another like people lie. Politics is the worst at it. Now the media is that way. The only reason I can figure that out is the media, the top, the leaders of the media are people that have a lot of money and they are doing the same thing that the Clintons have done. They're pedophiles, probably half of them. They're doing a lot of stuff that we would not approve of as a Christian or we shouldn't be approving of. And these organizations, you might as well say it'd be like back in the days of um, uh, the Roaring Twenties, maybe, uh, with uh, Al Capone, <laughs> you know, the gangs. They, they are connected together. We know that. And even the group, I know you're going to find this maybe hard to believe, some of you, Black Lives Matter. Go on their website, blacklivesmatter.com. Try to donate. See where it says who they give to and who they get from. And you'll find out it's a political organization backed by Democrats, 100%. So that means Soros is in there, the Clinton Foundation's in there, all those people. Then I've had about three people now on Facebook send me articles showing me a newspaper clipping where they were asking for people, they'd pay them $25 an hour to come and protest. And we know this has happened before in many instances I won't get into, but a lot of the paid protesters are the ones that are in jail now. Those are the ones that come from out of state. They were paid to come there and start the problems. They're more active. They're the, they're the ones that are mouthing off. They're probably the ones that got them to start tearing down the statues uh, and, and, and you know looting and robbing and everything and encouraged it. But anybody that is looting, robbing, breaking into buildings should be in prison. There's no question. 
I don't care what happens to them. I really don't because they're crazy people. They are mentally disturbed. Something's terribly wrong to think that they can just go in there and break into buildings and don't worry about nothing. Nobody's going to stop you and take whatever they want. Terrible. And, and marking all over buildings and defacing property. I mean, that's criminal activity. Those are not people I would consider a U.S. American citizen. And I wouldn't give them any rights. And I wouldn't put them in a regular prison where they can have fun and watch TV every day. No, I'd put them in an encampment with chain link fence and bob wire up about 30 foot high. And give them a limited amount to eat just to survive and make them do something every day for their time that they're in there. And I would be rough on them. I would not give them an easy life, but I would also have training that trained them. My goodness, you talk about training somebody. They want to train the police. Why not train these people that are criminals? And then start funding activity that will get churches and others to get tax breaks or whatever. If they're a church, they don't get a tax break, but give them some kind of breaks, whatever, to go in these neighborhoods and help train these kids and have gatherings that mean something out on the street instead of playing church. So the churches are at fault for a lot of this, I think. I really do. Most of them, uh, they might mean well, but most of them are not out on the street where the neighborhoods need help, where the poor kids are black, white, Hispanic, or whatever. And we could do it if we just set our minds to it. That means you might have to form a pastoral committee that will really be of all colors and race and listen to all of them. Don't just have a, a group where one guy's the big cheese or two or the big churches with the big money. That's ridiculous too. But give everybody a right to speak their thoughts. All right? Now, I know I'm coming across a little rough here, but I'm upset. I'm so upset, it's pathetic. I know a lot of people are. Some people are downright depressed or oppressed over it. I'm trying not to be that. But here's what I want to tell you in the end of this conversation right now. We've gone about seven minutes. I'm telling you for sure right now, this has got to be. If you don't start praying for and supporting your local police, write a letter to the chief of police. Let them know you're behind them. And if they are doing something wrong, let them know you think they're doing something wrong. If the uh, mayor is a liberal, do-nothing mayor who's just out for party votes and try to have a good time, kick him out, vote him out. Let him know you're disgusted with him. But get people in office. It's important. Don't tell me your vote don't count. But not just your vote, but knock on doors and tell people what you know and ask them what they know. And ask them if they understand what you're saying. Don't just say it and get mad at somebody. Find out what they know. Share what you know. And tell them, hey, I'm here to dialogue. I want the best thing for our city, don't you? I don't want my home destroyed. That would be the next thing. I don't want my neighborhood to go down in value because people are robbing and, and breaking into places and everything and no one wants to live there because that's what's coming if we let this happen. Back in the 70s, I remember that when people were violent like that, they'd get the fire wagons out and they had some of these trucks that had this big hose on it, kind of like a, a, a tank would have that big a gunner gun on there you know this would be a hose built right on the truck and they'd come in there on those streets and they'd just uh, take them off their feet and when they fell they're falling into a bunch of water so they didn't really get hurt usually but it scared them enough that they took off and then they did did use tear gas sometimes or whatever they called it but you got to do that and they should have done it the first day don't tell me I want your opinion. Please, somebody answer back to this because I'm about done talking, but I want to hear your opinion. I'm going to post it, but I want to hear opinions because I don't think that you can put all the police down. 95% or 98% of them probably are all good men and good, good women, good officers. In most of the bigger cities, the, the black 
people are the ones that run the police departments. They got police chiefs that are black. A lot of the policemen are black. And then you got people saying black lives matter, like the policemen aren't black. <laughs> I mean, so, and then Chicago just this weekend, they were shooting themselves. A hundred and some people were injured. And I forget 30 maybe killed or 20. That's ridiculous. That wasn't white people killing black people. That was black people killing black people. So again, I got people right now, I'm so disgusted. My own granddaughter thinking black lives matter. Let me tell you something. All lives matter. Say that, will you? All lives matter. Black babies matter. Those people who are for black lives matter, they're still hanging out with the Democrats saying that it's okay to kill babies too. Well, you keep killing the black babies there's more black babies killed percentage-wise than white babies, and there's more black babies killed than there are babies born to the black community, and there's a lot of people that die of natural nutrition, you know, just die, you know, their age. And that means that you keep going the way you're going, and you keep killing the babies, and pretty soon you're going to say, well, there aren't any black people living around here now. Is that what you want if you're a black person? <laughs> None of us should want that. So I say black babies matter too. And quit marking our streets up. I'm so aggravated with that. I want to mark the street up with all lives matter. What if the white people said, oh, we're going to mark up the walls and put white lives matter. And then the Hispanics come along, which they have a right. You know, they're a minority. They don't get favoritism maybe uh, like they would like to sometimes. Why don't they put Hispanics matter? Latinos matter. Why don't the Asians come along and say, hey, wait a minute, we want our two cents in there. Well, Koreans matter. Japan, I mean, Japanese matter. Chinese matter. Everybody could do that, couldn't they? Sure they could. But they're not doing that. So it's all a setup. Don't you see? The Bible says, be careful you not be deceived. Don't be deceived by these idiots that are out there stirring this up stirring the pot to cause problems. And why would they do it right now? I'll tell you why. You know why. Come on. It's election time. They want to make Donald Trump look bad. So get the unemployment back really bad and make the dollar go down and make everybody mad because they don't have no money. And then nobody will vote for him, right? Well, I don't believe so. He's going to win. But we better fight anyway like it matters because the more we win, the better off. We don't want to win by five. We want to win by 15 or more, 15% more. We want to have a good turnout. So, and we want you to support your police. Let them know you love them. I've had people tell me they know policemen and they'll take uh, a, maybe a cookies to them or something. Or, you know, they just let them know they care. Do something. Do something for their families. They have family, you know, they have kids. And they're scared to operate right now because their hands are tied. When I was an air policeman in the military, if what would have happened there, I would have killed them. Hey, I'm telling you right now, they broke the law. The two things they're talking about right now, that was, they broke the law, man. Maybe, maybe it was wrong the way the guy put his, uh, I think it was the way he put his knee on a guy's neck, yes. But he had him bound, and yet he couldn't control him to get him up to get him in a police car. Now, let the judges and the courts figure this out, and they're probably going to say some of that, because the truth of it is, they were resisting arrest. And then the second murder that they're talking about right now, Brooks, Brooks, he took the guy's taser, so he resisted arrest. They tried to get his hands tied. When they did, that's when he fought them. And the guys that I talk to, the, the men and women who are black that are my friends, they'll say, hey, I've never had that kind of problem. I've been stopped, and maybe I've been stopped maybe more than I want to a few times. But if you're cooperative, 99.9% .9 of those policemen, they're scared. They don't want to have a problem. And especially white policemen are scared of black people sometimes because they don't know if they're going to have a knife or try to get at them because of their attitude, maybe a bad attitude about white cops or something. The rappers talking about them being pigs and stuff. 
I don't want to be called a pig if I'm a policeman, would you? Huh? Would you want to be told kill the cops? No. So maybe you're going to have a reality. Maybe one of your kids is going to grow up someday to be a policeman. What do you think then? Let's stop this madness, okay? You got it? So if somebody resists, if somebody runs from a policeman, if somebody fires back at him, and you don't know for sure if it's the taser he's firing or what, and even if you did know, I understand a taser has two buttons on it, and if it's pushed the wrong way, it can kill. That's what I understand. So let's let the courts handle this in the days to come. But at the same time, if you're a prayer warrior, we all need to pray. Don't get on your knees for somebody and say you're sorry for something you didn't do. I didn't kill anybody. I didn't, I, I've always loved everybody. I do not hate black people. So don't expect me to get on my face and say I'm sorry for something I didn't do. I know people that have done that. They've tried it for the last 20 years or more. I've seen them do that. And it didn't mean a thing. Maybe at the moment it was emotional. But here's the truth. You treat me right, I'll treat you right. You treat me wrong, you come in and break into my place, you steal stuff, and you might get shot or killed. Simple. Because I'm defending my home. I'm defending people that I see out here. And I believe you're seeing a higher, right now, sale than any time in life of concealed weapons. Everybody's buying weapons because they don't want this to happen to them. They don't want to have problems. And, and when some black guy now just going up to some white person and shooting them just for the heck of it or shooting a cop. You got to stop this. Every one of you has got to help us. Come on. If you're on the good side, you got to help us speak up. And I know everybody don't like everything I said, and I'm not sorry about it. I'm a man of God. I've thought about this. I've prayed about it before I made this taping. Now I'm into 17 minutes. But I'm going to wind it up, and I'm going to just say, please, understand my heart. I've not said this out of hate. I've said this out of love and concern for all of us. Now, do your part. Show the policeman you're behind him. Clean up your own neighborhoods. Clean up your speaking, would you? It's not what you eat that defiles you. It's what comes out of your mouth, Christians included. Don't use peed off. Don't use all those words, the little slang words or the big slang words. And stop going into movie theaters where all you hear is every sentence F you or something. That's ridiculous. How ridiculous is that? That's just, that's showing ignorance. You don't know how to speak, so you got to put slang in there. And some of you are so stupid, you laugh at that. Why laugh at somebody cussing? Is there really something wrong with you people to do that? <laughs> I think there is. When I decided I want to follow the Word of God and follow the Lord, I decided right then and there I had to clean up my mouth. It's not perfect. I've gotten mad and said some things I shouldn't say. I'm not saying I'm perfect. But I know when I do it, and I know I don't want to do that. Just like I don't want to call you names. I don't want to be negative to you. I want to be kind to you. Respect one another and be at peace because eternity is coming. And if you're on the wrong side of it, you're going to end up for eternity away from God in total darkness. Whatever hell is like, I don't know, but it won't be pleasant. And there is a place where you're going to go hell. Not everybody's going to heaven. God is a just God, not just a loving God. He's proved it in his Bible. If you ever read it, you would know. He created us to have love and peace. He created us in his image. And if we don't want to be that way, and we don't want to be kind, he don't have a place for you in heaven either. So trust me, if you don't believe me, just start reading the Bible or talk to somebody that has. If you don't believe in the Bible, now you got a real problem. you know. And if you're an atheist, I feel sorry for you because that means you think you are God. You're your own God. Okay? Got it? Sayonara. Have a great forever. And hopefully, to those who care, God bless you. Amen.